we've talked um talked a little bit about uh, PPE here. Let's let's draw the middle P and just talk about PE. Ah, what are you um, what are you hearing from your your friends in the PE community? We are uh, we are now talking to a few funds about deals that they have that they would like us to look into. Uh, and they are getting closer on that. The processes are not as structured as they were. Uh, they're processes that either began before or that are based on existing relationships as opposed to an investment banker is running a very structured uh, process, uh, you know, and using an auction and uh, multiple bids to get to a certain point, et cetera. Um, for sure, uh, the deals are fewer in number. For sure, uh, they may take a little bit more time and they have to have a little bit more courage to execute deals given that they won't be able to do the same type of diligence, uh, but the deals are starting to get done. I would say though that the appetite for the funds to do deals is dependent on their nature. So, you know, what's their risk profile and, and they're not all the same, of course, uh, and also what stage they are. So are they, um, are they a fund that has raised a lot of money and not bought a lot of companies, in which case they are looking forward to the ability to buy things at a lower multiple? Um, or are they all spent, in which case they're focusing on, on, on their portfolio? I, you know, I spoke to somebody this week at a very large private equity fund, uh, and they have, they have a lot of companies and they have a lot of capital, right? So they have the freedom to make the decision of focusing on their portfolio or going out and spending, and they have made the decision uh, that they are going to focus on their portfolio for the rest of the year. And that is because they are too uncertain about a second wave to take capital that they may need to inject in certain portfolio companies. And so I think you see a range. And I think, uh, and of course, you also have distressed funds. And those, those funds are funds that have hired us on occasion. They do a different type of diligence and a different type of work uh, in their companies. Uh, they are generally courageous. They have a, a different view. And they are looking for super deals, which are you know either going to return them a giant amount of money and each one comes with a risk that they won't be able to rescue it. And so I would say those are almost a separate category, but I would say the private equity funds have been active the whole time, managing their portfolio, monitoring the market, looking at different sectors, and uh, they are now getting to deals. And we do, we do see that uh, in, in, in a few instances. Again, despite the fact that some may not have the appetite or the cash, I would say generally speaking, we see them moving towards deals. So interesting. It's not, it's not that they don't necessarily see opportunity. It's it's that they're just being very strategic about keeping their powder dry right now, or thinking about what what might be coming over the coming months. Yeah, the the ones that are. I mean, the ones that are not, they are they are out there. But the ones that are are being quiet uh, is, is that they they just don't know. And and one of the things they don't know is how long this lasts. Because it's one thing to say, you know, like I have said to. To people who have asked, I think it's a great time to buy a cruise company, a uh, cruise liner. I think that uh, people are going to go back to cruising. It has a cult-like following. Uh, logistically, you could even imagine testing on the way in and, uh, you know, having people not leave the ship. Uh, and there are certainly cruise lines in trouble and uh, there'll be some consolidation. Uh, and the main asset is something that, you know, will continue to have value provided that people will eventually cruise. We don't know if they're going to cruise in six months or two years in six months. Yep. And you therefore don't know how much cash you're going to burn along the way. And so it is for sure uh, true, in my opinion, that we will have that industry and will be a profitable industry. And it'll be a more profitable industry if many people go bankrupt and some of the assets go uh, at, a, at a diminished value from what they are today. Yes. But that doesn't mean that everybody has the appetite to make a bet on when they think it's going to come back and recognize that if it comes back later than that, they have to put a lot more cash in. And so th that's an example of where, you know, people are able to make bets on any industry and, uh, but there's still so much unknown relative to 